Hey, what's up, everybody? It's been a pretty long time. Hope you're all doing extremely well. Congratulations if you've made it this far into the year already. We're now on May, and it's already been four months that have passed this year, which means one third of the year is already gone, which means we're a lot closer to the next bull market. It's just a matter of time, guys. The market is going to oscillate in a cycle, it's going to have major ups. It's going to have some major downs for a period of time. But what we do know is that crypto is here to stay and it's not going anywhere. Regulation is starting to sink in a lot more. Hopefully they're going to remove Gary Gensler out of office and replace him. There is an agenda right now to get him out because he just cannot classify what securities are properly. So congratulations, guys, if you've made it four months into this year already. It's four months since we've had the major bull market rally or the mini one, rather. And it's just a matter of time until we get to the having the next year. So make sure you're staying strong. You're staying diligent. You're focusing on dollar cost averaging because that's what I'm doing. And that's what I would tell a good friend as well. And I'm not here to give you any financial advice, just here to guide you with my opinion. And I hope that we can all make it to this next major bull market together. I've been in the crypto space for eight years now. I've seen two major bear markets. I've seen two major bull markets. I've survived the two bear markets. I have thrived in the two bull markets. And I'm here to help you get to this next bull market and give you the best possible advice so you can increase your chances of being successful and catching this next bull run. If last year you got into the game or you got into it because of the bull market prior in 2021, well, and you've missed it most likely because a lot of people don't do well in their first year in crypto. Crypto. Even if you come into the bull market year, there's just too much information to absorb. You don't know enough yet. You're still an amateur in the game coming into a very competitive market. We got to remember that crypto is one of the most competitive markets in the world, the most competitive field. You are competing against sharks out there, sharks who just want to devour you. And every time we profit, it's not like you're making magical money from out of nowhere. It's a transfer of wealth from someone else who lost to you. And it's just an exchange of wealth, an exchange of money in the crypto space. So if you have that advantage, if you put in more time to learn a little bit more than the guy on the left or the right, you're going to be one step ahead of a lot of people that are new and coming to the game. So if you've been here only for a little bit of time, make sure you're focusing on developing your skills and developing your discipline, developing your strategies, like setting your stop losses properly, learning how to take profit, knowing how to trailing stop, learning chandelier exit indicators, really starting to fine tune those strategies because right now it is still the test you have many tests that are going to lead up to the bull market which will be the final exam and during this final exam you're not going to be able to study during the final exam you're going to have tons of homework and assignments right now so you can start preparing for this bull market because trust me it's coming it's coming in late 2024 maybe even early 2024, closer to having in April, and then 2025 comes around if we're full-blown into the bull market. I think that you're going to have a high success rate of being very successful and capitalizing on the markets if you develop your skills right now. If anybody is waiting for a lower price, I'm sorry to tell you, but I just don't think that we're going to get there. January or last year, November, December, those were the lows. When January began and the prices were starting to soar based on the way that the waves were forming and the impulse waves of doing over 100% on Bitcoin already, altcoins recovering a tremendous amount in value as well, like Solana, for example, tons of my coins in the portfolio are starting to gain traction. Coins are more likely to hold and drop a little bit right now and then rally soon this year than they are likely to drop another tremendous amount. So let's get right into this. I apologize for giving a really long intro. It's been a long time since you've been here with me, I suppose, and I've missed you all. So this month, not the best month for me, or last month rather, I'm always transparent with you guys. As you know, I show my P&L every single month, or I do now actually this year. January, I finished off at $80,000 profit. And then, no, 85, hold on. January was $78,000. February was really low at $40,000. And this month, or March rather, I completely broke even. I barely traded that month. It was one of my lowest volume months ever. This month, I've traded only $7 million in actual volume, which is really low compared to January, where I traded $35 million. And this month, I barely traded. I only took maybe seven or eight trades 
right? So actually, more than that, probably like, so these winning days, by the way, they're not all winning days. Some it's like some days, the way that they work, if you notice here, for example, on the 30th, this is considered a winning day, but I made only like a fraction of a dollar. This is a losing day. So they're not all days that I trade. So these numbers could be very skewed. Would you be happy with this profit every month? I was up about $15,000 American and in Canadian dollars, that works out to be about, my gain's kind of high. Give me one second here. That works out to be, I'm just testing this. Give me one second, sorry. Testing, testing. Now it's really high. Okay, okay. Sorry about that, guys. So this should be a lot better now. Uh, sorry about that. I had to remove my pop filter because it just took up too much of my screen. I'm reconfiguring. Oh, by the way, I'm heading to um, another city in July for till the end of October for four months just for the summer. So we're going to be heading to our summer house. So I'm going to need about um, about a week to adjust to set up a new system. We're just going to the summer house because it still builds a little bit too busy. So it'll be a little bit of a change of scenery and it won't be nearly as busy. So I'll have more time to focus on trading. So last month, $15,000 profit there. It says I have a 65% win rate, but I think my win rate was a lot higher than that, to be quite honest. I won a total of 23.2,000 and I lost about 8.4,000. So the net profit was $15,000 which is one of the lowest months that I've ever had in five years. Second lowest month. The, la the lowest month was actually last month, March, where I made probably like a 1000 or $2,000. I call that a break-even month. But would you be happy with this profit of $14,800 every month? Every year, that would be equal to about $180,000. And keep in mind, this is a low month for me. And when you develop your skills and they become better, and you're going to progress as a trader, and when you get better, you just know you are doing so much better based off of how you're treating your stop losses, based off of how you're trailing your stops, based off of how you're well-timed your entries are. When you grow that balance of yours, your skills will be proportional to that balance and the profits that you make. So they're directly proportional. So give it time. If you're saying to yourself something like, I wish I had more money to trade, please abandon that mentality because you don't need more money to trade, okay? Your your bankroll, it will grow proportionally to, to your skills. And remember that, okay? You need to, first of all, develop your skills so you can earn that right to play bigger. Until you earn that right, don't even think about dreaming of having fifty or $100,000 to day trade. Sure, for investing, that would be really nice. But for day trading, if you are not a consistent winner yet and you're still losing and you have a lot of things you need to work on and optimize and fine-tune, Try to prevent yourself from having the mentality of I need more to make more. That is not true. You need to first of all focus on developing the skills and once the skills comes, the profit is a bonus of those skills that you develop. And especially if you've been in the game for maybe a year or two, don't be hard on yourself. This takes a lot of time. If they were so easy, everybody would be extremely profitable all the time and everybody in the world would be doing this as well. So it's not that easy. It takes a lot of time to develop these skills, to develop that d discipline, especially that emotional fortitude and the ability to make decisions very quickly is also important. So anyways, this month was a really bad month for me. In a bull market, I'll average anywhere between, like literally this will be my, my daily, daily profit. Like last year, not last year, the bull market year, my biggest month was in August of 2021 where I made $350,000 in one month that was my biggest profit month and then surely enough the first day in october i ended up losing or in september rather i ended up losing one hundred thousand dollars but that month i still ended up being profitable by about one hundred fifty thousand dollars despite that loss and then we led into late september and october and november where all coins really really rallied and i was averaging like two three hundred thousand dollars profit it was a big year that year i took in over 1.5 million dollars of day trading profits in the bull market alone in three and a half months so that was significant for me and the you know bull markets you're gonna make a lot so just keep studying now be really patient don't stress too much about not having a tremendous income during this semi bull market. It will come eventually one day soon. So let's take a look at Bitcoin and uh, talk about what's been going on. So Bitcoin, as we all know, it hit a major high over here on April the 14th, I believe. Yeah, April the 14th around there. 
And then once we hit that high, it just never recovered from it. We had this slope trending resistance for the longest time. And it was pretty obvious that it was going to trend that way for a while. Ethereum had the same thing. So what you'll notice is that Ethereum had a very, very similar slope trend line, except it broke it. And then Ethereum ends up hitting this huge resistance from way back over here, where it sandwiches between these points, between here and down over here. So this point over here and the high of this one. So it breaks out of that trend line, that slope trend line that you saw Bitcoin have as well, really briefly, smacks out of it, or smashes out of it rather, and then it breaks right back into the downside. So huge bull trap in that region, which was I called that for my group, and it was very predictable. So now, Bitcoin as well, we're trending in the exact same space based off of a technical level. Here, we're seeing this major resistance that's been playing for a long time. So you guys can all see that as well. Based off of the chandelier exit indicator, the one that held the longest during the bear market was the three-day indicator. See the three-day, the ATR, the average true range, never broke this volatility above the three-day chart. So because it finally broke it for the first time ever, it started to signal that the bull market was beginning. And then it stays green throughout the whole time. This one candle turns it red because it did break below the support ATR here, but it recovers very quickly. So this would have been a really good entry where the red first started to show right there. So do you see the red right here above this candle? So it shows there. It tries to break down, but it broke up above it. So the moment that it closed above it would have been a really good entry. But of course, you'd have to allocate a pretty crazy stop loss if you're using the three day. So it's always better to zoom into a lower time frame and then you allocate a stop loss there. So let's just say you entered around there where my white line is. What time frame would you have used okay, to indicate or to ride where the ATR never broke one time? And that answer would have been the six hour time frame. So once it broke up above there, it came back down, right? And they broke above that line basically. You would you would use something like a six hour time frame. Even if it, if you even if you like excuse me, I'm studying my words today. Even if you are looking at it from early beginning, you would have seen the six hour pretty strong. So your stop loss would have been slightly underneath that six hour time frame. So if you entered around there you would have stopped yourself out when the six hours starts to turn red. And then it starts to turn red right here. You can see that. And that would have been where you would have exited the position. So now what we're seeing on Bitcoin on the higher time frame is you're seeing this sloped trend line. It is incredibly powerful right now. Depending on the time frame you're looking at it, it could be like this. But here it has a lot of wicks popping to the upside. On a four hour time frame, it looks probably better like this, I'd say. But either way, we are definitely re reaching some resistance to the top side over there. And if I had to make a prediction, to be quite honest, we're most likely going to hit back down to the $25,200 range that held in January, right here, actually February, and also August. I'm starting on my words today because I haven't done this for a long time, and I'm still coming out of that food poisoning. So I'm in a little bit of a weird state this morning, but I wanted to make sure that I was fresh this month and provided my opinion. So here in August and also February, we end up hitting a resistance. I would not be surprised if we ended up breaking to the downside and hitting it again. Based off of the dailies, Chandler exit indicators, the ATR says that we're very, very bearish right now. The trend has entirely changed. And before... Let's look for the time frame that held the truest. So the six hour starts to recover. It breaks down from here, but it starts to recover and it turns green. But on the eight hour, it's indicating support as well. On the 12 hour, it's indicating a support coming up. But on the daily, it 100% broke already. So it's showing a mixture of bearishness and bullishness right now in this particular region. If we take a look at MACDs, we see that it tried to recover one day right over here, but it ended up getting rejected pretty hard. This one right there. And then we started to downtrend today. We take a look at moving averages, and I'm sure it's going to be fairly bearish as well. So my short-term 
biased is actually quite bearish for now. Maybe till June, like middle of June, I would say we're most likely going to correct and hit down to the 25-2 regions. I would be shocked if we don't hit it. Based off of an Elliott Wave perspective, it is incredibly difficult to count this. And I would say it's almost impossible to count it. And every time I attempt it, it doesn't seem to make sense. Because the way it should be counted is this should be a 1. And yes, the 3 is actually bigger. But the wave 3 is not subdivisible, which makes it extremely difficult to count. So if a wave 4 were to hit, it would most likely hit sometime probably between May to June, I'm guessing. Just based on how proportional the chart could look as well. And also the wave 4 would align above the wave 1 territory, which makes sense, right? Because if we get a deep retracement like that, then that's not good because then the Elliott wave structures are not impulsive anymore. And wave 1 starts to get heavy and deep into the wave 1 territory. And that's not good. And then we don't know what this structure could possibly be. Could it be some sort of expanding triangle or wedge? Maybe it's possible in highly leveraged markets for the first wave. But I'm very bearish right now. And I, I do think we're going to end up hitting here. So that's my prediction. So I just wanted to give you guys my prediction for the month. May, June, fairly bearish and consolidating. And we're most likely going to hit $25,200 ranges. And keep in mind that my predictions are usually much more accurate than they are wrong. I would say based off of a technical perspective, I'm usually right between 65 to 85% of the time, depending on the month. But I would say that it's something you can count on. But it's not. I'm not here to give you financial advice or tell you that this is going to happen for sure. I'm just trying to offer you a perspective of what could possibly happen. So make sure you're always doing research yourself and be very, very diligent with your own opinions as well. So thank you for watching. I'll make sure you see a lot more of me this month. If you enjoy my content, make sure you're hitting that like and the subscribe button. It really helps me to know that you enjoy the videos and it helps the algorithm as well. And if you guys want to join my private Discord trading group, check out the link below. Or you can check out my bio on Twitter as well. It goes for $50 a month and we've got a community with tons of traders with the ultimate goal of finding trades together and helping all of each other learn and grow. I'll see you later. Thank you for watching. Bye now.